Boom, clickbait, trigger alert, fat shaming and the coronavirus. What's really going on, what in the world really is healthy and what you can do to actually make your day shorter, easier and more efficient and get yourself more immune against things like the corona. All right, so this is a very interesting topic and a very simple topic. Do I want to fat shame people? No, of course not. Because as much as I could fat shame somebody, I could also shame the people in the gym that have the amazing six pack and the big biceps and the great breasts that are slamming eight Red Bulls a day, taking energy pills to make their heart explode so they don't eat anything. And I could also talk about the skinny fat people that eat everything under the sun and never gain a pound because they've got great genetics. Th th that is not the point. The point is we need to set the bar for what healthy is. And all three of those examples are not healthy. You could even make the argument that the person that eats all that food and becomes larger has better genetics than the one that eats all the food and doesn't gain a pound because the body is sending that person a signal. When we eat bullshit, our body cannot function like it's supposed to. Do we want to be a Ferrari or do we want to be a 55 year old car that can't run anymore? Well, I I guess if the world is a perfect place, it doesn't really matter. However, when things like viruses and illnesses and sicknesses and cancers and all that jazz come along, we need our body as fit as possible. So do I want to fat shame you for being overweight? No, but I want you to be honest with yourself. Look at how you feel, how you look, what you're eating and understanding that there is something you can do about it. However, that message also goes to the girl, the guy in the gym that's crushing the weights just as hard just as hard as they are crushing the diet pills and the Red Bulls or that skinny fat person that's eating everything under the sun that thinks they have amazing genetics when really it's unfortunate because your body's hiding what you're really doing to yourself and even to throw one on top, the mom, dad, or the businessman or the businesswoman that's not getting the sleep that they need, that's not eating what they're supposed to eat, that's getting sugar for quick energy, that's crushing the coffees and just living an unhealthy life. All of that is gonna be answered very badly when something like Mother Nature comes by, which is gonna be my next video, Mother Nature's a Bitch, and regulates what's really going on. So the best thing that you and I and everyone else can do is learn to listen to our body, not media, not the newspaper, and sometimes even not science, believe it or not, and understand what healthy really is little caveat on that science piece is actually in some sense you should almost double check things with science because as GQ, Vogue and all those magazines are telling you being a plus size model is okay, my joke is where are they now? Why are they not on the cover now? Well that's because we know in this particular time the coronavirus is actually really attacking people that are either smoking A or too overweight. So now everybody starts realizing that this is not safe. How do we know this? Because McDonald's is losing money and the number one uh, what do you say, topic that's not being Instagrammed anymore is vaping. So we know now that we are paying the price of our decisions, the consequences either positive or negative. So these next three tips will give you ways to not only make yourself healthier, but you will actually do less instead of more. All right, tip number one, breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. I can go on an hour long about this one easily. This is one of my main topics I go into in the unbreakable body. However, we have enough food that we won't starve. We are 99% the same as the caveman and cavewoman. And back then we did not have McDonald's. We did not have your grocery store. We did not always eat breakfast. You have enough fat in your body, no matter how fit you are, to be fine in the morning. And actually, when you don't have those carbohydrates, when you don't have that breakfast in your body, you're gonna realize that your body dips into a different store of energy. Those would be ketones because they're starting to burn fat, which, believe it or not, is a cleaner energy than it burning sugar. So one thing that you can kinda do to optimize that fat burning process is the next time you drink coffee, and if you don't drink coffee, you can, I guess try this with tea and actually you can even buy water like this now, but try to put some coconut oil in it. I like using MCT oil and try putting some butter in it if you're not vegan and through that 
almost make your coffee, as I like to call it, fat coffee. Because what that's going to do is that's going to uh, work with the caffeine, kind of take your hunger away due to the caffeine being a diuretic, and also give you enough fat to where your body is able to continue to burn those calories. So it's going to increase your basal metabolism, which is the metabolism that it costs to run your body. So it's going to increase your metabolism. So you're going to burn more calories. You're going to be very well focused because you're going to have that fat. You're going to also have that caffeine and I would actually put some honey in it too because then you have a little bit of sugar that's all going to work together, help your hydration believe it or not, but also let you stay more focused and you're not going to have that drop where you kind of can't pay attention and you get that food fog because you don't have enough glucose or carbohydrates to bring the insulin in your body to make you drop. So that is tip number one. Try to skip breakfast. Have the coffee, throw some butter, throw some coconut oil into it, and try to eat around 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on when you wake up. But try to make that window of no food as long as you can. And feel free to drink as much water during that time as you want. And you can also do the same trick with the lime or the lemon to add some citrus taste to it and also the flavonoids. And you can also add some salt because that will help the uptake of the water go into your body. And if the water stays into your body, it also helps prevent hunger because your body's running smoother and you also have water in your system. All right, so tip number two is sprint three miles, don't run 10. And what I mean by that is you don't have to sprint, you don't even have to run, but I want to get you into this interval style training because our body, if you want, is like a car. If you're gonna burn gas, how are you gonna burn more? Driving 200 miles an hour or 50? Obviously 200. Well, in our body, the gas is the energy, our energy makes up calories, and the calorie, oh, the energy is calories, and the calories make up fat. So the more calories we can burn, the faster the fat goes. You can look at that by a sprinter and a long distance runner. A sprinter is jacked, a long distance runner looks like they have like three days left to live. That is because of the way the body works. So what? I want you to do is implement this interval training. So if you're only able to walk, perfect. What I want you to try to do, for example, is let's say you go 90 seconds at a slow walk. Now I want you to go 30 seconds at a faster walk. What that's gonna do, boom, it's gonna raise that heart rate. And then when you go back down to the lower, pace, your heart rate's going to drop back down. So not only will that burn more calories because you're moving at a higher pace, a faster pace, but then when you regulate back down and then go back up and regulate back down, that's also making your body work harder. So not only are you going to burn more calories, meaning burn more fat, you're going to save time because obviously you're going to need a lot less time to do that than one pace the entire time. You're going to ground and pound your body less, knees and ankles for example, and also a great trick or a great tip or a great advantage of this is you're gonna increase the basal metabolism. That is the metabolism, which I spoke about before, that makes your body move, runs, no pun intended, lack of better terms. But if that increases, your fat burning increases. So when you're done doing an exercise like this, you're gonna still get a higher rate of calorie caloric burnout and fat loss after you're done because not only one is your body really going to be pumped up for that next 45 minutes or hour but your metabolism your basal metabolism is also going to raise so you will basically start to turn yourself into a fat burning machine how bad is that sound all right, tip number three is sleep. This is probably one of the awesome ones, most awesome ones, if you can say that, because I was gonna actually write a blog, I've said this for ages, I need to finally write it, where you're actually better off sleeping an extra hour than waking up and going to the gym. Yeah, I'll repeat that again. You're better off sleeping an extra hour than waking up and going to the gym. Now, what do I mean by that? If you sleep six hours or less, on average per day, you eat three to 400 extra calories. And because of the hunger hormones, those three to four extra, three to four, 300 to 400 extra calories you eat are bullshit calories. These are calories that are gonna be more heavy, dense starches. So pastas and pizzas and breads and all that stuff that you're trying to get away from. That is what we do not want. So if you're gonna crush it in the gym and you sleep five hours and then you wake up early to go to the gym, that's terrible. Because not only do you have a whole bunch of other detrimental side effects from only from sleeping less than six hours, such as your cardiovascular rate goes down, your muscle, your ability for your body to rehabilitate broken muscles and all that jazz also decreases. Your, your, your ability to, to, to 
optimize your func in function throughout your day is gone. So in that sense, especially if you're busy with your kids and your job and everything under the sun, you are better off sleeping that extra hour because one out of 14,000 people can sleep six hours and not negatively be affected by it. So most likely that is not you. So get your seven to nine hours of sleep, go to bed without alcohol in your system because that affects your non-dream sleep. Try to cut the caffeine because that will also inhibit your sleep. Cut the blue light, meaning the electronics, a few hours before you sleep because one hour can delay it by three, the onset of melatonin. So sleep and sleep well and enjoy it and then wake up the next day and see how you feel. All right, and the bonus tip, take cold showers. There you go. You don't have to do anything extra in any of these, uh, in any of these tips. It's actually basically saving you time and cutting things out. What in the world is the cold shower going to do? Simple. One is going to be cold. So it's going to get your body warmed up. It's going to make you try to fight against it. When you try to stop fighting against it, it's going to make your body work even more because now you want to go into your sympathetic nervous system, but you're bringing yourself back in your parasympathetic nervous system, which is going to start to fire the hell out of your basal metabolism. Two, it's gonna make you a stronger person because you're gonna realize that you can handle it. So then when you look at that cake or you look at this or you think you're gonna sleep less than six hours, you have the discipline to say, you know what? I'm gonna take some extreme ownership here because I can crush a goddamn cold shower and I can say no to this too. All you need to do is get in the shower and end it for the last 30 seconds to one minute with cold water and when you got that step down, you can even increase it one more and start at the beginning with 30 seconds to one minute. That is much harder because your body is not warm, the shower is not warm, your bathroom is not warm, and you really have to be mentally strong to do it, but the mental strength will increase, your immune system will increase, your basal metabolism will increase, so not only do you become a better, stronger human, do you burn more calories due, due, due to the fact, I can't talk, of the basal metabolism, but your immune system gets stronger because you are anti fragile that means the way we make our immune system stronger is by pushing it a little bit towards its limits because what does not, what is it, what, what, what you do not, what is that saying? What does not kill makes you stronger. Good Lord. Luckily, this is my last video I have to shoot today. But what does not kill you makes you stronger. That is how the immune system works. So get in the shower, make it cold, implement those other three tips, and you will be shocked with how robust your body actually becomes. All right, so hopefully your shoulders, your back, your this, your that, everything is feeling better. You guys have seen all the links throughout the video, websites, gtsgermany.com. If you like these videos, hit the subscribe button, comment below, start a conversation. I'm not doing these for myself. I want to talk with you. Let's discuss what's going on. If you didn't like the video, let me know that too. And check out the free links, man. I got the 30 day unbreakable body challenge. Sign up for that. It's on my website. Links are below. Totally free. I don't hassle you. I'm just trying to fix your shit. So check it out. Thanks so much. Follow me on the Instagram channel. Follow me on the podcast. Let's become friends, let's have fun, and goddammit, let's become pain-free.